Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, we're going to look at some old school power. This is the Orion HCCA 2100 competition amplifier. This was new in the late 90s, like around 97, 98. I picked it up in 2000 for a whopping $150 by somebody who uh, needed some work done and uh, they didn't have the money to pay, so it worked out to $150 worth on this amplifier. So one thing uh, with this amp, it's been said for a long time that this amp did way more power than it was rated for. It's rated for 100 by two at four ohms, 200 by two at two ohms, and 800 by one at two ohms. So this gigantic amplifier is an 800 watt amp, according to Orion's ratings. At the time that this amplifier was new, uh, one ohm amps were not really a thing. Uh, the Concept 97.1 was a one ohm amp, uh, and that was the same exact case. The XTR 2250, uh, I don't remember if that was a four ohm or a two ohm amp, uh, but it also used the same case. And this is from a time where Amps simply did not make more than 1,200, 1,500 watts. Uh, that was the biggest thing that you were going to get. Uh, it wasn't until a few years later, 2,000 watt amps started coming out, and uh, that really changed things. But on this one, we also get to look at how things were done way back when, starting with our plug. Uh, it was very common. Uh, this one is a two channel amp, remember? So this is actually one set of outputs that's been the most commonly used. This is the other set, so we have one channel and the other channel. Orange stripe on black, yellow stripe on black, yellow, orange, so naturally this is bridged, uh, otherwise it would be the negative swap here and we'd have one channel, one channel. Our remote wire that comes off of that. Um, yes, these are fuses. The outputs were fused, which if you don't know is actually kind of a good thing. Uh, it helps prevent the amp from blowing up when you go over current. Say you wired it too low, maybe the protect on this amp isn't so hot, the fuses would pop. Or if you blew a sub, uh, if it went to go dead short, fuses would pop uh, instead of popping the amplifier. So that's actually not a bad idea, not something that's been done in a very, very long time. But that plugs in right over here. And there are those connections. Now for the power connections, we have right here. Our power and ground actually go in the amp and I'll flip this over and show that here in a moment. And then our signal, which could be a DIN cable, which has not been used in a very long time. Uh, that would actually be one cable that went from the head unit or processor or EQ uh, all the way into here is just one cable with one giant plug on here, had everything on it. Or RCA inputs, which is what we will be using. And that actually is for clipping, believe it or not. We get in the red, we are clipping. Uh, I may or may not be able to observe that while it's in the car, uh, but we have our gain. Now, the maximum voltage on this, I think was two volts. I'd have to find an owner's manual and double check that, but maximum two volts RCA. So most modern amps are gonna be six volts or sometimes higher, uh, but Sundown Audio amps and our amps are six volt and that's kind of Pretty common, you don't generally find over six volt. But again, this was two. Then we have a mono switch. So if you had it stereo mono, uh, you actually had to flip the switch for that to work properly. And the EQ button, which is basically bass boost. Uh, I don't know exactly how much it boosted it, but I'm pretty sure it's 45 hertz. Hit the EQ button. That's what it did. Now flipping this over. You can see what we're working with here. Whole lot of board fill in this case. Again, 800 watts mono. This is a class AB. We have fuse holders on the inside. 10 gauge wire running from the power terminals. Now, one reason why I got this so cheap is he thought it didn't work. Uh, these wires were burnt. Um, I'm guessing he probably had like maybe a 10 gauge wire going into the amp. Uh, pulled a ton of current didn't like it burnt those out so from here to here it's still a factory wire those did not burn 
uh, but from here to here they did burn. So those were replaced when I got the amplifier. Uh, but the wire just slides in this end, bolts down. And uh, that's how power connection happened on these way back when. Very similar, but different. Uh, now everything is on the outside, but the same concept. So now that we're familiar with the amp, we're going to look at the reason why we're doing this. It's been said for a long, long time that you could run this amp at 1 ohm and it would make 1600 watts. So naturally, we're going to check that. I've seen some people say that you can run this at a half ohm and get over 2000 watts out of it. We're not going to check that because I feel very confident from prior history that's not going to do anything good for me. This amp I don't believe has been powered on in uh, possibly over 10 years. So one thing that we can check here is, are we losing power over time? Uh, we can look at different impedance ratings. I'm gonna try to play down around two ohms as best as possible, as well as four ohms by just changing the frequency that we're playing. And since we have a reactive load that is different than a resistive load, like you would find on Amp Dyno, and Big D Wiz over at Old School Stereo has done a video on one of these on an amp dyno, which is a, again, a resistive load. It's just a resistor, no speakers connected. So I know what kind of result he got, and uh, he was disappointed at uh, the power that came out of it. It's possible that that particular amp may have had some issue or age or something like that, but here's a completely different amp that we can compare that to. So I'm gonna get this installed in the car, then we will make all the connections and beyond testing the actual power output, we're also going to check power input. We're going to make sure that we can get a good efficiency check on this as well, so we can have a whole lot more information about this amp. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed, and then I'll show you the setup. And here is the setup. We've got our amplifier down here. It is not secured or anything. Do not drive around like that. Got connected to seven excess power uh, cap banks, we have current clamp, we have voltage, and we're going to track that with that camera that will be aimed right down there at it so we can follow it in real time and through some very low production filming magic we will see all of this at the same time. We're going to see our input voltage, input current, and actual power output all at the same time. We've got a low baller 12 dual two connected to this uh remember we're not going for spl or anything so the uh, sensor is not in the car at all uh, all we're worried about is power and i will dodge around frequencies to get different impedances for our examples here but this is the setup and let's get to uh seeing what the data says Quote Ned Flanders, what in the diddly happened here? The lower impedance we went, the less power it made. It made the most power at four ohms, right around there. Just over rated power of what was it, two ohms. So it was just over 800 watts at four ohms. It made a dirty 500 watts at two ohms, where it was supposed to make 800 watts. It definitely wouldn't run any lower than that. And Whenever you went up on volume, as soon as it started to get into hard clipping, it just cut power back. It never started to go into like massive clipping where it would just sound quieter. It actually made less power as you got more clipping. It was around 65% efficient, as I expected. It's a class AB. But what I didn't expect is at the lower impedance, around two ohms, being so inefficient. It was just pulling so much power. So whenever somebody says the amp is 
power hungry, it could be because it's extremely inefficient at that load. But at four ohms and higher, it still makes pretty good power considering it wasn't rated for that. It's actually making over double rated power at that impedance, it's just not at the impedance that it's supposed to be doing it at. At the very least, from a reliability standpoint, uh, the amp is now over 20 years old and it still works fine. Uh, it works the same as it did 15 years ago when I used it and I just powered it up and everything was great. So we can definitely put that myth to bed. There is no circumstance where it's going to make rated power at the rated impedance and if you'd like to check out Big D Wiz's video, by all means, check that one out and see what it did on resistive load and the results that he got. I think this is another one of those cases where you remember amps being really badass, and then in modern day when you have more equipment to test it with, it's just not. Not saying that all amps are like that, but this is definitely one of those cases. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and have the notification bell selected so you get updates every Tuesday when we upload a new video or on other days with our Q&A videos. You can support the channel on Patreon in the link below, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and make sure you shop emfcaraudio.com for all your EMF audio, sundown audio, excess power, audio control, and SBC needs. That also supports the channel. Don't forget to share these videos because that also supports the channel. The more people that see it, more people get educated, they subscribe, hit the notification bell, buy from the store, it all works out. Just go ahead and share the video. If you have any questions about this video, make sure you comment below. If you had any predictions on what would happen, comment those below. I'm curious what you thought. I'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.